EA had their spotlight series regarding the FPS games today, and part of what they had to talk about aside from Apex Legends was, of course, Battlefield 2042, and that's what we are here for. Now, nothing crazy dropped, so don't worry, you didn't miss any trailers or any massive information, but there are some important details and some things that it gave us to think about in regards to Battlefield 2042, and that's what I want to talk about today. So without further ado, if you do enjoy today's video, don't forget to leave it a nice, thick, and juicy like as always. And of course, if you enjoy this kind of content, you want more like it, don't forget to hit that big red sexy subscribe button right underneath the video. Also, got to shout out my channel members. You guys help make these videos possible. If you want to join, get access to the exclusive perks that they get. Don't forget to check out the link in the description or hit the blue join button. Anyway, let's begin. So the first thing they kind of touched on, and this is kind of obvious if you've watched any of the trailers, is rethinking the building blocks of gameplay. Obviously, we're going to have plenty of new ways with traversal to move around the maps, have plenty of new ways to be able to do things with the various gadgets and specialists, and also things like weather events. It's going to be a lot of different things to Battlefield 2042's gameplay that we probably have not, or well, definitely have not seen in previous Battlefield titles. And that's just something they mentioned, and I thought it was important to reiterate because, you know, it, it does give you a little bit to think about in regards to this game and what it's going to be like. It's probably not going to be exactly like Battlefield 3 and 4 as much as it does seem to be inspired by it. So that is something to think about. Definitely uh, let me know your thoughts on that down below. Now, one thing with regards to the weather events that I do want to touch on is, are they going to be annoying or are they going to be helpful? Are they going to be fun or too chaotic? Because there has to be a fine balance. They talked a little bit about some of their experiences with the weather events in the little video that they were talking about. And some of them mentioned, you know, you're in a little bit of a pinch on the battlefield and the tornado comes in and it sweeps away the people that got you in a pinch and then you can go and run away and escape. Now, is that because of the chaos of the event that you're able to get away? Or is it because the tornado actually sweeps away the enemies? Or how is that going to work? I'm sure it's a combination of both. But is this going to be annoying if you're on the other side of that and you're pressing your advantage and then you have to either one disengage, which I can swallow if I got to, you know, move on and, and get to my next engagement? Or am I just gonna get swept off my feet and then twirl around in a tornado until I get shot from a skyscraper somewhere? I hope not because that wouldn't be very fun now, would it? If you work to get this advantage and then it's taken away out of no fault of your own, it's just a random event on the map. So that's, that wouldn't be very fun. We do know you can shoot through tornadoes, which is how I know that you would wait until death when you get into a tornado, if, if that is the case. But I just want it to be this fine balance of the chaos of just the battlefield, things you can't help, like helicopters crashing into buildings and potentially killing you and other events like that versus just, this is annoying, let me just go to the redeploy screen type of deal. There's gotta be a good balance. We know if you have the wingsuit, you can take the momentum of the tornado and use that to swing you across the map. Apparently you can do stuff like that. And hopefully if you do get caught up in the tornado, you can use it to get taken to the next fun gameplay moment rather than just Again, wait for death or go to the redeploy screen. So got to see more of that. I'm just, I definitely have my concerns and I know a lot of other players do as well. And this made me think about it a little bit more. I don't want to say it enhanced the concerns, but it definitely didn't help them in any way. Now, one thing this did confirm is that this is made on a completely new version of the Frostbite engine. Not a huge thing, just something I wanted to mention. There is also Ripple Effect Studios, formerly DICE LA. They've kind of separated themselves a little bit from DICE LA. So that is kind of neat to see. And I'm excited to see what other kind of things they're going to be working on in the future. But for now, I'm most interested as to this redacted mode that they have been working on with Battlefield 2042. And while they didn't show anything off, of course, nothing was shown off at this event. Don't worry, you didn't really miss much. They did talk about it and kind of semi, I don't want to say confirm, but if you've been paying attention to some of the leaks, like the Battle Hub thing, where it's essentially nostalgia DLC, as we call it on our Battlecast podcast that we do, link will be in the description for that. It's essentially that all the fan favorite modes, maps and whatnot, they're going to be in that nostalgia DLC, redacted mode, Battle Hub, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to see more on July 22nd. I'm excited to see more about it and, and learn what it is. But again, we don't have everything confirmed for it and what exactly it's going to entail. Is it just going to be remastered versions of these maps just in Battlefield 2042? Or is it going to be an entirely separate mode where you can experience the older games how they were just in a much easier fashion? I don't know. It could be either one. Lastly, they talked briefly about Hazard Zone. Hazard Zone is 
basically what they've already described it. It's a battlefield take on a battle royale. Hopefully it's, uh, you know, better than Firestorm. But the comparisons to Escape from Tarkov, things like that, I don't know. They just kind of reiterated what they've already said about it. It's a high stakes mode, their own take on battle royale sort of deal, but it's not a battle royale. I, yeah, I don't know if that's gonna end up becoming some blow up mode like Warzone was or anything like that. To me, of the three major modes, which they did confirm, uh, it's gonna be the Nostalgia DLC, All Out Warfare, which we saw in the trailers, and then Hazard Zone. To me, All Out Warfare seems to be the one in the lead for what most people are gonna be playing. But again, gotta see more. Hazard Zone could be something really cool. Just, I don't know, it doesn't seem like it has all the hype around it that it maybe should if it's going to blow up like that. I feel like they'd be hyping it up more. We'll just have to see. I know I'm saying that like about everything, but that's pretty much what this event was. They did also touch a little bit on what makes a good live service, and this could almost be its own entire video, basically. And I talked about this with Battlefield 5 when comparing it to a game like Modern Warfare. The advice the Apex team gave to the Battlefield team is, have content ready after launch to just go. And that's something that DICE really has never done with any of their live services. Think Battlefield 1, think Star Wars Battlefront 2, think Battlefield 5. Even though like BF1 wasn't really a live service, it was a premium pass, it, it still took six months to get the first expansion. And in Star Wars Battlefront 2, they had to rework the entire progression system before they could actually put out new content. And then Battlefield 5, we got like what, one map three months after launch and then six months before we got another one. This is as opposed to games like Modern Warfare, which had things in the pipeline as soon as the game launched. And they went and they put them out and it kept fans, you know, their attention was grabbed for a longer period of time. And that could be whether or not, you know, the game was received well or not is how quickly they can get this stuff out. Obviously, like I said, Battlefront 2, you have to rework the entire progression system before you can actually start working on new content. But you still got to have that stuff in the pipeline. Battlefield 2042 doesn't seem to have that issue of how well fans are receiving it. So have stuff ready to go, especially since you're only launching with seven maps. I know they're huge, but it's only seven maps. So have the stuff ready to go right out the gate and you will keep people's attention. I know you guys have like a three second attention span. I see the audience retention rate. I mean, come on, I gotta crack a joke like every three seconds to be able to keep you guys on this video. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope we get to see some more dang stuff from Battlefield 2042 as we get closer to the event. And of course, beyond, don't forget to subscribe because I will be covering the crap out of this game. So anyway, thank you guys. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next video.